Hey NAI football fans, Corey Thorpe here with another edition of the NAI F-Ball podcast powered by AdCraft USA, your custom apparel, merch, and uniform experts. Our friends at AdCraft have been with us for many years now. They've run web stores for us multiple times. These guys are NAI fans and family who are experts in the apparel and merchandise world. AdCraft allows you to take the hassle out of ordering. Let their knowledgeable design and customer service staff handle everything from hosting the store online, shipping the product, and helping your customers so you can get back to the game. Find them online at adcraftusa.com. All right, guys. This week we are staying in the mid-states, but this time we hop a little bit over to the other side of the division. Tonight we have head coach Joe Curry from St. Francis of Illinois. Coach, how are you doing tonight? Great. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. After the year that USF had last year, we knew that even though you just fell right on the outside of the playoffs, we knew we had to get you on and chat with you and talk about uh, the, the progression that the Saints have been going through. You know, we've been watching over the last few years, and I think I think it was Bobby Bowden that said it best, is that teams go from having big losses to small losses to big uh to small wins to big wins and that's certainly been the case for your saints over the last couple years just thinking back to that spring season in 2021 ish um where i swear every loss except for maybe one or two on your schedule was it felt like seven points or less uh Talk about that progression and learning how to win. Well, I think, uh, you know, it just comes down to for us, we got, you know, in in the spring there, um, I think everybody just was so excited to play football uh, that, you know, they were willing to kind of do anything to uh, to go out there and compete. And you really started to see that some of our leadership that we that we had at that time, um, you know, who was like a Rayvon Johnson, who just left us and everything, um, really turned our program's mindset and thinking around to believing that they were going to go out and compete and win. And then, you know, you lose some close games. We lost to Olivet Nazarene in a close one um, in the in the spring season, and and I think that game more than anything really um, really gave our kids a lot of confidence and and really let them know that hey they can compete in this league and and after that game I after the Alabama game I believe we we won I believe it was two out of our last three or something like that and and you know, like you mentioned some of the losses that we had were close ones so uh so coming into the fall you know we just knew that uh our, our kids knew that they were going to go out and compete and it actually took us a couple of games we, we lost our we didn't even play our first game because of COVID in the fall um so our, our kids had to wait wait around longer. Our program actually got shut down for two weeks because of COVID, and you know, so it took us a while to get to get going and and realize what we were doing. We had some new players that we had to figure out their roles and everything. But once we figured that out after the first couple of weeks in the fall, um, you know, our kids really really took to what we were asking them to do and and really went out there and executed. And it showed with our six game winning streak that we had throughout the season last year. And uh, it was just fun to coach those guys and fun to, to see that attitude change. And, and now then we lost our last game in a heartbreaker to St. Xavier. And, and, you know, I, I think our kids are chomping at the bit to want to want to get back um, to those, to that, to that area again. Let's take a look at that down the stretch. Uh, a year ago, you play Olivet Nazarene in Joliet. Um, you win 43 to 30. You play at Roosevelt, who was right there in the thick of it in the spring season. You beat them 14 to nothing at their place. And then you have to play at home against St. Xavier, which we'll get to that more specifically in a minute. That That game deserves its own question. Talk about kind of that mini gauntlet to end the year and making sure that you're taking one game at a time. Well, that's our whole, uh, one of our whole premises is, you know, we try to go one and oh and try to stay in the present and our guys that do our games for us online, they, you know, they, they, they joke with me every time. Cause I, every, every pregame, I just say, Hey, the goal is to go one and oh today. That's it. You know? And um, it's really something that our guys really believe in and our coaches really believe in. And, and 
you know, we've been part of in the past, I guess, our guys and, and our program has been part of maybe looking too far down the road or something of that nature. And, you know, and, and the nature of the beast of college athletics is you just can't do that. And um, our league is a very, very good league. So you say the mini gauntlet there at the end. I mean, you know, our whole season, we start out with Marion, you know, we go to Siena Heights. And I mean, we, our whole season was kind of a gauntlet, but that's, that's the Mid-States Football Association in a nutshell. It's, it, it, it is a gauntlet. And, you know, there's a reason why we play crossover games within our league. And we don't tend to venture out of our league to go play because everybody that we play in our league is for the most part nationally ranked at some point, you know, so um, those are tough games and there's tough, gaunt- they're tough gauntlets. And I've always even said that those early games that we play against the east side of the conference, those should get us ready for for our west side. And 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 they did. And, um, you know, once we figured out as a team where we were, kind of what we were doing and how we were going to get there, um, we really took off this year. And it, like I said, it was a lot of fun and our kids had a lot of fun with it, too. I've, I've talked with Mike Feminist a little bit earlier in the offseason, and I know that there is a good bit of rivalry between the two of St. Xavier and St. Francis, but all the same because of the familiarity there where uh, Mike Feminist was your head coach and uh, having coached at USF, that there's also a lot of love between the two programs. Talk about having to have that last game against St. Xavier against your former head coach. Uh, we always we always like it. I mean, I hate Mike Feminist. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but uh, <laughs> no, he'll he'll hear me say that and chuckle. But um, but no, I mean, you know, Coach Feminist was a great. Uh, back when I played here, he was a defensive coordinator here when I played here, and and he was a um, he, he was a great mentor to me in my coaching profession and everything as as I was coming up through the ranks and of being a graduate assistant and being a full-time coach and all those different things. So it's always fun to compete. You know, you say it's a rivalry and I'll be quite frank with you. It's, it's really not because we're one in 23 versus them, I think. So it's, you know, we got to find a way to, to start winning some of those games versus San Xavier. And it's, some of it's encouraging, but some of it's like, you know, last year we lost in overtime. A couple of years ago, we lost by three points. You know, a couple of years earlier than that, they scored on us with 20 seconds to go to beat us by six. So, you know, it, it there was, there's there been some, some nail biters here over the recent years that, you know, we just got to find a way to go it, it, to go win those things. And, and I really think that's where our kids are at right now. They want to get back to to competing at that level um, in our, in our conference. And it's not, it, it is, our, our kids, they play against each other in high school, with each other in high school. So there's a lot of familiarity with both squads. And, uh, you know, all the players that play at St. Xavier, we recruited here at St. Francis. All the players at St. Francis, they were recruited at St. Xavier for the most part. So it's it's definitely a, a, a challenging rivalry, but hopefully one that we can start putting up some W's with. So looking at your team, you know, a year ago, you have a true freshman or at least a freshman in Sam Tumulty that you go under center with, you know, is his brother is out there uh, at defensive back and, and returner and all conference at that, but you throw Sam out there and all he does is be your leading rusher and a first team all conference quarterback. Um, you do lose uh, Rayvon Johnson, as you had alluded to earlier uh, who accounted for a lot of Sam's yardage. So talk mm-hmm. about for me how you grow your offense and grow Sam while growing your playmakers. Well, Sam was a unique um, unique player for us to get. Obviously, having his brother Scotty here helped us a ton. Um, but to be honest with you, he came in and, and we didn't quite know what he, what we had because Sam is a, he's a freshman, but he's also, he was also in college a year already. So, um, he just went to Augustana where they didn't play in the COVID season. And then he spent a semester at college of DuPage. So he hadn't played football in two years either. So that's what took us, um, took us some time to figure out how, how are we going to run our offense around Sam Tumulty? And, um, and, and once we figured that out after a couple of weeks and just how much 
how much of a great athlete he is. And, and we figured out that, you know, he can throw the ball. There's some people that didn't think he could throw the ball. And, and uh, you know, so once we figured out exactly what we could do with him, then, you know, that's where you saw our offense tend to really take off there in the middle of the season when we were putting up some some big point numbers, like you said, versus Salabat and um, those sort of schools. I mean, we, we, we could have scored more versus some other schools too. We just uh, – the other thing that we had going for us this year was our defense was really, really good. Our defense was, I think, top 15 in the country. So it was, um, you know, we kind of leaned on both those things and and, and helped us out. But but how, we're going to continue to grow our our offense around Sam. And now just because Rayvon left does not mean that we that our cupboard's bare. I mean, we have um, Liam Eldridge who will be back. He's a he's a uh, he was second team All Conference in the COVID season. And then got a knee injury um, about halfway through the season last year. So, um, so he's a very he'll be a senior. He'll be very very capable for us. Um, you know, so he'll be really good at receiver. We got some young guys who played actually for us last year, but really didn't have to do much as far as a starring role because we had Ravon and they got a chance to learn under Ravon and those sort of things. So they're having a really good spring, and I'm excited about our receiver core as a whole, just our playmakers as a whole. We got, you know, with Sam and our receivers. Um, we got Dan Getch, who's our tight end, who is an all-conference tight end, and uh, and Daywan Gavin, who's coming back. He was a he was a real good player for us in the spring before he suffered a broken foot uh, in the spring, but he's looking really really good in spring ball. So it's our offense is is looking very very explosive, and I always tell our guys you know, on offense, hey, just put it in your playmakers' hands and get the hell out of the way, and 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 you know don't turn it over. If we do those things, you know then. Um, I, I like what our offense can produce. Defensively, you know, there is no shortage of, of defensive juggernauts in the mid-states. And y'all have quite a few uh, players that are going to be coming back for y'all that are going to help your defense out. If it, as uh, you know, with Ryan King, Mike Johnson along the line, Scotty Tumulty, yeah, defensive back or Angel Mata at uh, defensive back as well. The only one you're losing is Chris Johnson, your, your leading tackler from a year ago. Talk about uh, replacing that linebacker spot, that, that kind of that captain of the uh, defense spot. Yeah, Chris was, Chris was very, very important to what we do. Um, he, you know, very unconventional, um, some of the things that he did, but he just made plays for us. And it was, um, it, it was special to see him operate at times. Um, but, you know, that being said, I mean, our, our our defensive line now will be back all three starters for now. This will be three years in a row, um, you know, so, you know, Cameron Holman was also a starter for us up there that he ended up um, he was all conference as a true freshman in the spring. So um, so, I mean, he's he's really good, too. And Ryan King came off with a great year for us last year. And Mike Johnson did a great job. I think up front we're going to be real, real solid. We got a couple transfers, too, who are going to provide some good depth for us um, along the along the defensive line. Our linebackers, um, you know, re- replacing Chris will be tough. But our guys that we played there last year, our guys that are coming back are, are Tarrant T.J. Neals and, and uh, Mike Whitney's and, and Logan Johnson's. I mean, they started every game for us, so they – they're, they're all back and they're and they're having a really good spring too so hopefully you know we can get the guys out there to make some of the plays that chris did and then our defensive backfield is just um we got all five of those guys back too you know so it'll be um it, it'll be and it's always nice to have scotty back there um obviously but you know our, our corners angel mod and terrence nicholson had a really good year um you know our our, our safeties uh, jalen cooper had a really really good year for us um, and, and, uh, Jermaine Ross, and then, you know, obviously Scotty, but, and we did sign some good kids that are going to come in and, and compete with those guys too. So we, we've had a very good recruiting class this year, maybe off of our success from the fall, but I'm excited to see some of the new guys that we got coming in and how they will help us both offensively and defensively. So many Christmas coach, coach. It's like, you're reading my show notes over here. Um, at what point can, you start to really sell that improvement to the recruits. I mean, you know, you go from a two-win season to a six-win season. Is that something you're selling immediately? Is that something that, that the recruits want to see a couple years' worth of improvement before they can sort of buy into that idea? What do you – What do you, uh, what do I, you I think I think the recruiting aspect, I think our, um, our kids, our current players do a heck of a job of selling our program, of getting around – 
you know, I always tell those guys, we always have them on a recruiting weekend. We always have them spend a half hour with our current players and just say, guys, these are the guys that are living it, being a student athlete here at St. Francis right now, what the program is about. Like you listen to coach Curry all day. Cause I can talk, you know, and sell you on whatever, but these guys actually, you know, live it and, and, and know what it's like to be a part of the program. And so I think that they, they take a lot of those questions for us and, and, you know, sell the program. Ryan King is one of the, he's a Twitter master and he sends us recruits all the time. And, you know, he, he recruits half of our kids for us, you know, so, um, but he's not the only one. I mean, Ryan can't, there's, there's a bunch of guys in our team that do the exact same thing for us. And I think it's them that sell the program and what it's like being here. And, you know, as long as you have, quality, quality kids like that, um, you know, selling your program, you can't, you're, you're not going to miss on too many of them. Now I'm going to have to go find Ryan King and make sure that I, uh, make sure I follow him. <laughs> so, um, to your current players, you, you, you've been talking about getting better in spring and, and having that, I assume y'all are back in spring ball at this point. Mm -hmm. So what has been your messaging like using last year as a springboard for the year to come? Well, I think it's important that you know your history so that you, you're you not doomed to repeat it, but you can't live in the past. And that was, that's been my message all year. Guys, you haven't won anything. This is a new year. You're going to be the hunted. People know that you're good and you haven't won anything. And I told them we won now three, three conference championships in school history. Never has it been repeated. And that's the challenge. You know, we, we've never repeated because it's it's hard it's hard to do people think that you're good and you're going to get your best shot and all those things so and things have to go your way for us last year they did go our way a lot of the time you know and you know but you got to make and break your own your your own luck so to speak but you know it's my message has simply been guys this is a new year what you did in the past means absolutely nothing you know uh, ryan king as an example i don't care that you were in all conference last year you haven't done anything yet this year you know and you just continually sell that and we just you know we mess with sam sam nobody thinks you're a good quarterback you can't throw the ball you know so you know you just mess with them and, and try to and try to get something to motivate them in their head and those sort of things and um you know and the bottom line is we haven't never never repeated here and we haven't played in a playoff game in 11 years so, you know, that's I know that that's what our guys want to do. And uh, so I think that that's been a big motivation for them. You know, at least so far, it's been this semester and, you know, they're working really hard, doing some great things. And I just can't wait to for the fall to get here. Yeah, I can't either. It's you know, it's starting to uh, we had our I think one of our first few 80 degree days down here in in Florida. And I know y'all are probably starting to make your way out of snow up there but uh yeah yeah you know, it's, it's, it's getting it's getting warm and you know i'm starting to get ready to to start getting some football i mean the, i know we got to get to the summer first but in it the summer is always too long yeah. so i'm going to ask you the question that i've pretty much been asking everybody and got to get your opinion on it and that is regarding the broader support of the program and that's how does St. Francis of Illinois connect with its alumni and its fans to create ongoing support both on the field on game day and then off the field in a uh, more uh, monetary supportive role. Yeah, I think our, <clears throat> our, our community here at St. Francis has been very, very good. Um, you know, the alumni, um, you know, number one, you have to you have to provide them with a good experience, you know, and, and and they will come back. And, you know, and for the most part, our alumni do. They come back. They support. Um, you know, I played here, so I got a lot of friends who, you know, come back and, and, and support the program. And, you know, just and then just the players that we've coached throughout the years here. I've been here since 2005 and, you know, seeing all those guys go through it and then come back. And, and not only that, but th there were some lean years there from 2000 between in between 2005 and where we are now. And, you know, they're just so proud to have the program back to being, you know, competing for conference championships and and hopefully the playoffs. And, and that's all, you know, when I became the head coach here, that's all I ever wanted to do was to leave this place better than what I got it. And um, I, I take a lot of pride in being the head coach here at St. Francis and providing a great football program for all those guys to to be proud of they could talk about they went to st francis and know where it is and those sort of things so you know we we love our alumni i want to bring them back um, as much as we possibly can we 
we try to get together as much as we possibly can golf outings and those sort of things just to try to bring some excitement, you know, from them to the program. And then, you know, I always call them and and tell them to get their asses over to games too. So that's, that's always a positive. Absolutely. There's nothing like a full stadium to, you know, make life a little bit easier, at least at home. So coach, I want to thank you for, for coming on tonight, for taking the time out of your, out of your evening. I know you're probably tired after, a little bit of practice there, but thanks for coming on the show, and we look forward to watching how the Midwest unfolds next year. Well, thank you very much for having us on, and thank you for your support of St. Francis, and keep us in mind because we're, we're going to be there. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the NAIF Ball Podcast presented by AdCraft USA. Be sure to contact them for all your custom apparel, merch, and uniform needs. Thanks also to Mommy Bay Turf and Turf Nation, as well as Leading Edge Fundraising for their support of the podcast. If you enjoy the show, subscribe to the podcast as well as to our YouTube channel. Leave us a review if you're listening on Apple Podcasts. As always, if you'd like to support what we do, head over to patreon.com slash n-a-i-a-f-b-a-l-l and become a patron. We can't do what we do without our sponsors and listeners like you.